Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I have got my faves and fails for August. Actually, I haven't done one of these since the end of May, beginning of June, so this is really like a three month faves and fails, and I have so much stuff out on my desk in front of me. I have a feeling this is going to be a long one. So grab yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever your uh, time of day is. You feel like imbibing or take your sleeping pill, get ready to fall asleep. I love it that um, YouTube just allows, you know, people like me to say hello to you uh, from halfway across the planet from here in Massachusetts. So hi from Massachusetts, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great day today. All right, so where should we start? I should have had this all organized in my mind before I started recording, but oh well, here we are. Let's jump in. Uh, let's start with foundations because over those last three months, I tried four, maybe five different matte blurring foundations and so i have them all here they're not all faves but they actually were all pretty good none of these though kicked my holy grail the chanel out of top position but i do like them they are worth a try depending on what kind of skin you have so let me just talk about them quickly my favorite one of the four i think is the natasha denona transfer matte foundation but it wasn't perfect one of my main problems with it was that it does look like makeup sitting on the skin and the Dior Backstage Face and Body. One of the best things about it was that no matter how much you put on, it never looked like makeup sitting on the skin. So today I mixed these guys together. And the reason I'm holding up two of these is because I didn't get an exact color match for me. So I mixed together 40N and 35R to get my correct color. And so I did that. And then I mixed in another, you know, 50% of the Dior Backstage Face and Body. And oh my gosh, the perfect foundation. So I'm not suggesting that you run out and buy both of these because they are pricey foundations, but if you are a foundation junkie, like a lot of us are, and you bought these to try and you have them both and you couldn't get them to quite be right because this one was a little too heavy and this one was a little too sheer or whatever, try mixing these two together. It makes a great combo. Of the four things I tested, the order that I'm putting them in by my preference is the Natasha Denona in first place among these three. And then second runner up was the It Cosmetics CC Oil-Free Matte. And then third, but really only because of the alcohol and the fragrance was the Dior Backstage Face and Body. So those three I did full foundation Fridays on. And if you wanna take a look at those videos to see my full multi-day wear tests on them, I'll put the links right up here. I'll put the entire Foundation Friday playlist right up here. So any foundation you're ever looking for, just look to that playlist and see if you can find it on there. Sometimes though, I look at foundations just in a smaller video, like a trying new makeup. And this past month I did that with this Revlon Colorstay Full Cover Foundation. And this is another like matte blurring foundation. And the day that I wore it, I really liked it. I gotta say for a drugstore product, it pretty much rivaled any of those three that I just showed you. With a caveat though, but every time I've worn this, I ended up breaking out the next day. And I was like, oh, bummer, because I really liked you, but I really can't use this. So that's one to try if you're on more of a budget. So possibly a better fit for you if you're beyond the acne stage, which apparently I am never going to be. <laughs> But I gotta say that since I started using Curology, um, I haven't really had a breakout at all. My skin has been so clear. And I love this because it's my tretinoin. It's also my acne medicine, clindamycin, and it's a, got a brightening azaleic acid in there that helps to keep my skin where if I do get a pimple, those red spots fade a lot faster. Even though this Revlon foundation did break me out a little bit, the pimples didn't last more than a day. Like they kind of tried to pop up and then they were like, ah, we're afraid of the clindamycin or whatever. And they went back down and they were gone by the next day. So but if you do want to try Curology and they have it in your state, uh, you can try your first month free using the link below the video in the information box. This isn't sponsored by Curology. I'm just talking about a product that I love. That's what that was. All right, so foundations aside, let's talk about eyeshadows. I bought three eyeshadow palettes this month. Um, one I got in the Sephora sale, and that is the Anastasia Norvina palette. And this palette is beautiful if you like a lot of color and you like a lot of shimmer and glitter and can work with that because these 
there goes the brush. It also comes with a nice brush. These eyeshadows are just so, so beautiful. If you like slightly cooler tones, like it's got the purples and the pinks. So I did like three different looks with this over the first week that I got it. I was just so in love with it. Still am. This is a highly pigmented palette. So you really have to kind of know what you're doing. I'd say this is more of like an expert you know, eyeshadow appliers palette. If you are a novice, this might be too much for you. The glitters might be too much. The colors might be too intense. In which case, then I would recommend the other one or two of the other two palettes that I picked up this month. And those are the Makeup Revolution Emily edits. These two palettes were released by Emily Noel 83 who's here on YouTube, and she did a collab with Makeup Revolution. And I did a whole full face get ready with me tutorial just Tuesday using the Needs palette and it was really really pretty i really like the palette they're not as pigmented as the norvina palette so you know if you're just not that skilled with eyeshadow these are a lot easier to work with it does take a little more effort to like build up the colors so this is like you know your comfort palette when you want to be in your comfort zone fairly natural you know and the norvina palette is definitely like a special occasion like go out palette if you want <laughs> something in between. Emily's The Wands palette is chock full of colors. So uh, take a look at this. 24 pans of eyeshadow in all different colors. Today I'm wearing this palette so I've got a nice lavender eyeshadow look going on here. I used the cream on my movable lid and then I used Hobby in the crease. Then I went in with Family, this really nice dark purple color deep in the crease. And then I did the middle part of the lid with this one named after her daughter, Belle Violet. And then I did in the inner corner with this one named after her other daughter, Eve Rose. So whether you're into a lot of color or just a really natural look, Emily has got you covered with those two palettes. Now the eyeliners that I'm wearing today are two things that I picked up in the Sephora sale as well. And they are the Marc Jacobs Highliner eyeliners. Um, they're gel eyeliners. I'm wearing this lavender one in my lower waterline today. This one I'm so in love with. I feel like it just kind of brightens up the lower waterline, but at the same time, it's like eyeliner yet brightening, only with like just a little pop of lavender. And I love using it with the Emily The Wants palette when I'm doing a purpley eyeshadow look. And I also love using it with the Norvina palette because, you know, these two were made for each other too. So that I'm absolutely loving. And then they also have a matte gray one, which you know how much I love matte gray eyeliner for my upper uh, waterline. And this one's really good. It stays all day. It doesn't go anywhere. Like I wear contacts and my eyes are fairly dry all the time because of course I overwear them like 12, 15 hours a day. And so I'm always putting in eye drops and then the eye drops dribble, dribble down my face. And I got to say this eyeliner stays in place. I don't ever have like eyeliner dribbles out of the corners of my eyes for my eye drops or anything. So those two are really fantastic. Absolutely loving those. Last thing in makeup, I tried a new mascara. This was in PR from Wander Beauty. This is their Unlashed Volume and Curl Mascara, and I really like this. Um, this has what I usually refer to as a Christmas tree of a brush. It is pretty darn big, but it's curved, but I gotta say I didn't really have that hard of a time with this one. I do tend to get the mascara on my eyelid a little bit when I use these bigger brushes, which is why my favorite has been and does continue to be the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Knockout. That one I absolutely love. The brush is perfect. The formula is perfect. But I was really impressed with this Wander Beauty um, Unlashed Mascara, and I like it that it's in like a little plastic squeezy tube, so it, it's just lighter weight, takes up less room in your luggage if you want to travel with it. I found that it really gave me a lot of volume with my lashes, and it actually does curl them. Like, they are so curly today. Wait, should I come in closer and show you why? Ah, here I come. Okay, so, you know, my lashes tend to be fairly straight. They tend to, tend to just stick out from my eyes fairly straight. And I feel like this has actually curls my lashes and it lasts all day. There is the tiniest bit of flaking, but it doesn't, you know, run when I put in the eye drops or anything. Um, it's not the easiest to remove at night. That's the one thing I will say about the Marc Jacobs. Um, the gray one is called Irony, this eyeliner. It's not the easiest to remove at night, but, you know, removing it with my Clinique 
uh, take the day off cleansing balm pretty much gets everything off in one step so I love that stuff um, and that leads us into the next product that I tried and that is the pharmacy green clean makeup melt away cleansing balm it's green it's got a lot of botanical extracts in it which is the one thing that I don't like about it I actually like how this removes makeup it does almost as good a job as the Clinique cleansing balm but just you know slightly slightly less good but the thing is with all the botanical extracts in there I have super sensitive skin and botanicals just irritate my skin and I know that they're super hot right now and I know everybody loves them but while I'm washing my face it burns my eyes a little bit and afterwards I'm always a little red and blotchy and my skin is just a little extra sensitive so if you don't have super sensitive skin and you like botanicals in your product and you're looking for something that removes makeup really well this really removes makeup really well so there is that oh let's talk about the hair I have tried a new shampoo and conditioner because so sadly like everything in my life everything I love gets discontinued I was using and loving a shampoo and conditioner from Isalon that kept my hair super not frizzy and the one thing that I battle with most with my hair is frizz especially in the summertime and it has been so hot and so humid the last couple weeks even if I flat iron it even if I curl it you know within an hour if I go outside and it's humid it's just like whew. and with this new shampoo and conditioner that I've tried it hasn't been frizzy at all. The shampoo and conditioner that I used is the Olaplex number no. four bond maintenance shampoo and the Olaplex number no. five bond maintenance conditioner. These say that they repair, strengthen, and hydrate all hair types. It is patented technology from Olaplex.com. 8.5 ounces for each of these. Now get ready for the price tag. This is the one thing that I hate about them. $28 a piece. Ouch. Fortunately, I did buy them at the Sephora sale, $22 a piece with my Rouge 20% off, uh, which is still a lot. So loving these. Do not love the price tag. So while I'm going to use it, while it's hot and humid here, I probably am going to look for something else to use during the other months because it is so, so very pricey. The other thing I'm wondering about is they have like a leave-on treatment. And I'm wondering if I could forego the shampoo and conditioner and just get the leave-on treatment because you're supposed to use that once a week. Um, and it's like a 10-minute thing, which I really probably won't do. Or if I could use a different shampoo and just use the conditioner. Have you guys tried this? Let me know. What's your success fail rate with the treatment or with just using the conditioner? All right, so moving on, I tried a couple of new sunscreens this month. One was a fave, one was a fail. I'm just going down the faves right now, then we'll get into the fails. Oh, maybe this will be the good place to transition from faves to fails. Yes, I think it will be. All right, so the sunscreen that I liked is from Color Science. This is the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield SPF 50 Broad Spectrum PA++. This screens against UVA, UVB, infrared, and blue light from your devices. So a very modern sunscreen that has it all. This sunscreen has a slight tint to it, so it's a little bit on the, like, pinkish whitish side. When I put it on it made me look a little bit like pinkish whitish to start. It's a little whitish when you first put it on. It leaves a little bit of a white cast but over 20 minutes that you let it dry and set the white cast completely disappears. It felt really nice. It felt lightweight. It felt um, non-greasy. It was still pretty shiny on my face though. It didn't have any issues blending in around the hairline or the eyebrows so it is one that could be worn on its own if you like a little bit more luminous finish or just add a little powder over the top you know those color science sunscreen powders or something like the IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Airbrush Perfecting Powder. That's an SPF 50. That's a nice powder to put over the top of a sunscreen that isn't so matte. If it wasn't a hundred percent perfect but I am going to keep it in the running for my 2019 sunscreen testing. So that's going to go in that bin and I will do a thorough vetting of it in that video, which won't be out for, you know, six or nine months or so. And especially if you're looking for something with a higher zinc oxide percentage, uh, this one has 12% zinc oxide as the sunscreen. So a really nice product. All right, so let's move on to the fails and we'll talk about the first fail which was the other sunscreen I tried this month. It is the Peter Thomas Roth Max Mineral Naked SPF 45 sunscreen. 
This one is 19.24% zinc oxide. This one is more like a thicker cream, not quite as runny. This one does have more of a tint that, you know, if you have darker skin, it might not work for you. If you have super light skin, it might not work for you. It definitely feels lightweight and lotiony going on. What I liked about this one is that it was completely clear and invisible on the skin. No white cast or anything like that. The problem with it is it's pretty heavy feeling, it's pretty greasy feeling, and even after the 20 minutes of dry down, it still felt greasy and heavy. And it was so shiny. It was literally like someone was shining a spotlight on me. Now this I would never wear on its own just because it's so, so shiny. So I didn't really like this. This one was kind of a fail. I'm not gonna investigate it further for next year's sunscreen video. Sorry to say, PTR. I know a lot of people were waiting to hear on this one and it's not good news. And guess what? Not good news on this one either, which is Peter Thomas Roth Skin to Die For Mineral Matte CC Cream. This is an SPF 30. I actually use this three times, once the way you're supposed to, which is to use just this, once over the sunscreen and once over, you know, regular, my normal sunscreen. I felt like all my imperfections were just magnified with this. This was really shiny. It didn't offer any coverage. It didn't cover redness. It didn't cover age spots. And it... Uh, settled in my wrinkles, settled in my pores, made me look super textured by the end of the day. Yeah, I thought it would work well with the sunscreen I use today, but... Did she just like fall over like a log? I pretty much hated this, I'm sorry to say, because you know I'm always looking for a good CC cream or BB cream, but this one just was not it. Um, another big disappointment uh, in makeup this is the Natasha Denona Magic Primer Anti-Shine Flawless Face Base. I picked this up a while ago and had tried it a few times, wasn't that impressed with it, but then when I got the Natasha Denona Foundation, it said right on their website to use it with this and that would make you perfect and flawless. So I used it with this on one side of my face and I used, I think, no primer on the other side of my face. The side with no primer or way better than the side with this primer on underneath. It wore off quick, it slid around, it got super shiny, it was patchy, it was all over the place. I mean, it was just an epic fail. This made it settle into wrinkles which wasn't good. You know, I don't like that. And where I had used it with some other foundations before and never really liked it, I think now I'm just gonna put this in the fails bin and call it a day on it. I mean, it is a mainly silicone-based primer and those just don't work on me because I do have slightly oily T-zone. And when the oils kind of mix with the silicones, that is what makes my uh, foundation slide around a lot. So I think this could probably work well for people with drier skin. And I think that this foundation could also work well for people with drier skin where it doesn't have anything in it that's drying like SD alcohol. And I didn't feel like this was drying on my face at all. I felt like it was really actually kind of moisturizing, but I think it would actually be good for people with dry skin because it didn't settle into wrinkles, didn't settle into pores. All right, and then the last thing in my fails for this month was the La Vanilla, the natural deodorant. I impulse purchased this in the line at Sephora. So it actually worked fairly well for most of the day. Again, hot, sweaty, humid day. Uh, the entire day wearing this from the minute I put it on, it doesn't have that dry feeling that I'm used to with standard deodorants and antiperspirants. Um, my armpits just kind of felt like tacky all day, which I don't really love that because then I'm aware of them and usually I'm not aware of my armpits during the day. Like, I like that, right? I don't like being constantly reminded that they're there feeling damp. <laughs> I didn't smell bad for most of the day. Even when I went to bed, I was like, oh, that stuff actually, you know, I'm not that stinky. I mean, I didn't smell as, you know, good as I normally would at the end of the day. But when this really went off the rails was sometime during the night when I was sleeping. <laughs> the smell coming out of my own armpits woke me up in the middle of the night from a sound sleep. I was like, well, why am I awake? Oh, what's that smell? And I was like, wait, what's that? You know how it takes you a minute to like wake up and then you realize where you are and what, what's happening. I was like, oh God, no, it's me. I wanted to crawl out of bed and get in the shower at like two in the morning. I smelled 
so bad. I have nothing against standard deodorants. I just wanted to try a natural one because I thought, well, if it could work, why not? Last babe that I wanted to mention are my necklace and these two little rings. I noticed that my neck had started becoming very sensitive to different metals, particularly nickel, I think. And so I had been looking for some dainty jewelry that didn't have nickel in it. And I found this brand, which makes this little necklace. I love this asymmetrical necklace. They also have more traditional symmetrical ones, but they have just beautiful jewelry. Um, it's called Adorn Mond, and the price points aren't too bad, but this necklace is nickel-free, so it's one of the few necklaces in my necklace collection that I can actually wear, and I just love the little charms on it. So it's just these really pretty, dainty little charms, like there's a star, and you know, I don't even know what they are. They have um, little Swarovski crystals in there, and then I also got these two rings, which some people have commented on and asked me where I got them. I link all my jewelry and everything I'm wearing, you know, always in the information box below the video, all the way at the bottom so that you don't have to ask for ask me in the comments and then hope I see it and then wait for a reply. You can always just open the info box and scroll down and find whatever um, I'm wearing in there. But these rings are so cute. They're so pretty and I just love them. But they come in sets of two, which it, when I first bought them, I was like, oh, why do I need like two of this one and two of this one? Like not sets of two where this is a set. So now that I had two of these and two of these, I think they're made for like stacking and wearing multiples, but they have two daughters. And so I was able to give each of them one of the rings and it just makes me feel so much like closer to them when they're back at college like they are right now you know they left a couple weeks ago but anyway they're just really pretty rings I just love them so much they have like just a little bit of sparkle to them and everything and then the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video was this manicure have you guys tried the dip gel manicure it's like a little pot of powder and they paint on you know the the base coat and everything and then they dip your fingernail into this pot of powder and then tap it off and then they paint on another coat and then you dip again so you do that you like dip in like three times or something and then she cured it a little bit under the uv light but i think only 60 seconds per hand and then it was done and um it was interesting because then she took that like little mini um, rotary sander that they have that they use on the acrylics and they and she sanded them all down the thickness of my nails they're very thick like this way and they feel super strong with this amount of stuff on there but it is a lot of stuff for me like I'm not used to I mean I love this color but I'm not used to my nails being so bulky it was more expensive than a standard gel manicure like my standard gel manicure is only $28 this was 40 bucks um, it's been on there two weeks already though, so hopefully it's going to last for three weeks to a month before I have to take, get it taken off. But I just wanted to mention that that's something new that you can get at the salon if you're interested in like the newest and latest and greatest of types of manicures. Alright, so I finally got into the bottom of the pile of stuff here on my desk. I think that was probably a long one. Sorry about that, but I'm going to have to make these faves and fails more often. You know, quarterly is just not often enough. I certainly try enough of makeup and skincare care and everything every month to let you know what I tried on a monthly basis. So if you like the faves and fails and want to see it every month, give the video a thumbs up so I know that you want that. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative. So that's it for today. Thanks everybody for watching. You know, I always really appreciate your time. So I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.